Number eight, be creative in finding pockets of time to pray throughout the day. You see, once you have this exclusive time with the Lord, typically in the morning, right? Once that's a foundation for you, then you can trust God for pockets of time during the day to also be praying. Your praying doesn't have to be limited to a single time during the course of the day. There are many pockets of potential prayer times that we can actually have throughout the day. For example, we know that Daniel prayed three times a day. He continued doing this despite persecution, right? That's why he was persecuted. That's why he was thrown into the lion's den. But it says that he prayed three times a day. Right? David appears to have done so also in Psalm 55, verses 16 through to 17. says, As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. In addition to your early morning time of prayer, here are some spaces that you can also use for prayer. And I want to give you some ideas in terms of this, because very often we'll say, Okay, you're now praying X number of hours per day, and people think that it's all in one go, but it's not necessarily all in one go. It's about having the exclusive time, which is really important, but then finding other pockets throughout the day to pray. For example, nursing mothers feeding a baby. That can be your time of prayer. If you think of Susanna Wesley, for example, right? She was such a great example of a praying mother who taught her sons to pray, right? Crucial. I've been in a situation where um, we had family over and my nephew, uh, Joshua, little Joshua, was still a little baby at the time. And I thought, you know what, let me just relieve his parents, um, you know, of this particular duty for some time. And I took him and I was putting him to sleep. And that was actually a time of prayer for me. And that was a good 45 minutes just walking around with little Joshua, uh, lying down with him and putting him to sleep. Parents were blessed in the process, but for me, it was a time of prayer, right? Um, So this thing of saying, oh, I've got kids, therefore I can't pray. No, you can actually double up your time. You know, you're a nursing mom. You're putting your baby to sleep. That's prayer time. You don't have to see it as a waste of time. Praying in the spirit when traveling long distances, that can be very useful. You've got an eight-hour trip somewhere. You're stuck in traffic. Um... You, you, you travel quite a bit in your vehicle. You're praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit. You're not seeing traffic as a waste of time, right? Uh, and, when I, and I say praying in the Spirit because your mind can be active in terms of you are ha- concentrating on the road, hopefully. But your spirit is being edified as you pray in the Spirit. Waiting in a queue. That's one of the things I love about queues. It's prayer time for me, right? Waiting for your children to start a match. Very often with our kids, if we're taking them to matches, let's say on a Saturday, we have to go quite a bit earlier so that they have their warm up and so on. And I say to the boys, go, I'll stay in the car and that's prayer time for me, right? Um, That 45 minutes while they're warming up, doing whatever they're doing, it's more prayer time for me. You can go for a prayer walk. You're exercising, but at the same time, you're also praying. Whilst washing dishes. So when you're doing certain mindless tasks, It can be a time for you to be praying, typically praying in the spirit. Uh, Whilst at a car wash, waiting for your vehicle. I mean, the examples are endless. But try to find spaces throughout the day where you are praying. A good example of this is Brother Lawrence. Okay, Lawrence was a monk who uh, washed dishes and cooked meals and tried to pray without ceasing. The Bible says pray without ceasing, right? He became so famous for his habit that someone actually interviewed him and published a little book called uh, The Practice of the Presence of God, popular book. The book hasn't been out of print in over 300 years and over 20 million copies in English alone right, have been printed. I think that's amazing. So Lawrence believed that it was actually easy to be close to God in prayer. And if you didn't wander far off from him uh, for the rest of the day, okay, you end up very close to him. And there's a guy called Jared who talks about how he discovered Lawrence's home after many months of research and the impact of his simple prayer philosophy uh, has helped so many people to constantly commune with Christ. 
This is so important. So you have that, that special exclusive time with the Lord, but you also make sure that you are practicing his presence throughout the day.